Good morning and welcome to the Long Island Matchmaker Show. I'm Lauren DeFranco here with Maureen Tara Nelson of MTN Matchmaking, Long Island's only executive level certified matchmaker in the business for 20 years. Good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Lauren and everyone listening. We're so excited to be here again. On this beautiful, beautiful October day. Sunday, yes. And thank you for listening, but also thank you for all the great questions that everyone emails into us every week. It just makes us so happy to see that you take the time to ask the questions and it's just, it's very exciting for us to We feel give loved. The we feel yes. very loved here. We feel the love, so thank you and keep it up. And I just want to mention that we're in Breast Cancer Awareness Month Yep. and uh, Maureen has a charity that's near and dear to her yes. heart. And uh, Finding love at MTN Matchmaking after kissing cancer goodbye. Mm -hmm. So if you are a breast cancer survivor and you're ready to find love now, email in your journey to us. And on November 1st, what we do every year, because I am a survivor from eight years ago, we pick the most moving story, and they're all amazing stories. Everyone will win some sort of gift just for sharing your beautiful story and journey with us, but someone will win our $6,000 membership, as well as my colleagues who want to contribute their services for the winner. And as I gather, if you are the winner, you will feel like a princess yes. for the day. That's the whole goal of it. Exactly. Yep. And also, Maureen, um, a lot of people write in, and I'm sure they tell you stories that are so heartfelt and so yes. endearing we're, and We're crying as right? we're listening to them. Yes. And it must be incredibly yeah. hard to choose because so many people have so many personal stories yeah. with breast cancer. Yes, and I know with myself, it took me two years before I actually told people that I went through it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from the onset of it, for the next two years, none of my clients knew what I was going through, nor did any of my colleagues. And then just two years later, I realized... I really think I should be a breast cancer advocate mm -hmm. to help other people going through it. And that's when I started the charity. And I guess that helps with the healing process as well, because mm -hmm. if you can advocate and help other people, yes. it helps you to heal, correct? Yes, it absolutely helps a lot, but it does bring back a lot of memories that I literally just popped out of my head mm -hmm. because I like to be positive. So it does bring back you know, some of my own feelings of what I personally went through, but I'm sure it's, it's all very therapeutic and it's for a good cause. And that's why I said everyone that writes in is going to win some sort of gift. Everyone's a winner. Everyone is because the stories are just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So keep sending them in, please. And also, we want to talk about a little bit about dating after breast cancer, since we are still in no October, and it's an important thing to talk about going through breast cancer and getting on the other side of it and being able to get there, get out there in the dating world and feel confident about yourself. Yes. I help so many of our clients that are also breast cancer survivors, and the first thing I tell them is to have confidence. Because if you are 40 plus and you are now a breast cancer survivor re-entering the dating scene, you might at first, which I hear all the time, feel apprehensive. Stop it now because every man that you meet and will meet will have some sort of scar on his body as mm -hmm. well, right. whether it's his heart or, you know. Everybody's been through something exactly, at that age. Exactly, exactly. So you just have to have the confidence in yourself. I am very big on the plastic surgery. That was what got me through it. Mm -hmm you know, demanding to look better than I did before. And we know that you do uh, because yeah. you show us weekly. I, I show us <laughs> weekly, but not with Stu no. in the room. No, Stu's here today, <laughs> so we can't give him a show. I, I got to be on my best behavior. Big guns here listening today. Big, Big guns, guns listening in the room. So I can't show them. But <laughs> no peekaboo. I, <laughs> I am very proud of them. And I will say 
that I rec I recommend my plastic surgeon. <laughs> Stu just walked out. I think, I, I, I think he got embarrassed. Oh, I think that's that's a good way Did to we get, scare him away. I think that's a good way to get rid of the big guns, just <laughs> letting everyone know he's here. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so I do recommend my fantastic plastic surgeon, Doctor Peter Korn, with a K in Great Neck, because some of the ladies have come to me and they did not have a good plastic surgeon. I show them mine, they show me theirs, and I say, you have to go. If you, you know, how do you feel? I don't like mine at all, okay. Then you have to go to Dr. Peter Korn, mm. and you will feel great and look great. But the important thing is, the first time that you are going to be intimate, just remember, it's very romantic to keep the lights off and the candles on, mm -hmm. and I can guarantee you, the man is not going to notice. So just trust me on that. Just when you're at that point, and if you're not a client, if you're a client, I'm gonna help you with it. If you're not, just have the confidence in yourself, put on the candles, turn the lights off, and you will see afterwards he won't notice a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just positive thinking to get yourself yep. out there and not put obstacles that really aren't there in your way, correct? Like yes, right. you have to really just feel good about yourself yep. and know that everybody does have something. Everybody's got medical issues. Everybody, yes. Um, so I do want to talk about this because this is something <laughs> I keep begging Maureen to watch this show, Clickbait, because we always talk I about internet dating. I don't binge watch shows. I don't have time she to She doesn't have time, but watch. I've been watching this show, Clickbait, and it really highlights the problems with internet dating or the, the dangers of internet yes. dating and in that anyone can pose as anyone. And you could be talking to someone and think you're developing a rapport and a relationship yes. and they might not even be the person they say they are. They're right. not even, they're nothing as to what they say they right. are. It could be a complete fantasy yes. and you're getting involved with someone who is faking their right. way through a relationship. And people fall in love with that person. Right. That's the crazy part. And because they've never, sight so unseen. Good. Yeah. Because they're so, these people are so good at what they do. Mm -hmm. They say the right things. Yes, and you know, it, just picture yourself on internet dating sites and you know, you're lonely, you're divorced for a couple of years, and now you have a man reaching out to you, telling you how beautiful you are every day, how much he loves you. He's never felt this way before in his life. Women will eat it up mm -hmm. and believe it. It's very enticing. It. And they, they're predators because they see yes. vulnerable women. The, yes. They target them. And it's it's uh, very easy for them to manipulate and even to say, I want you to come visit me in Spain. <laughs> but I, I just, I lost my credit card this week. If you can put it on your credit card when you get here, I'll, I'll just you give back. you the money and pay you back. And then, so the woman Red naturally, flag. she does it though. Mm -hmm. She, you know, gives him the money. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for the actual situation of them meeting, he will then come up with some sort of problem or issue. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I have a family dilemma. We just have to put it off a week. Mm -hmm. Or then it's a month. And then he just ghosts her. But he just got $1,000 from her, too. Right. Well, I, I have friends and acquaintances that have told me they've been in these relationships. And I say, well, have you met the person? And they're like, no, well, he's in California. And <laughs> crazy I'm thinking if you to think myself, about it. how could you waste your time right. dating with someone you don't even, you, you're not going right. to meet? When you don't have to. Right. I'm when not, you have a matchmaker right. like well, Maureen. Yes. And I'm not here promoting my service at all. Mm. But... If someone does live on Long Island, I've only wanted to concentrate on Long Island. So there's no reason to have to go to different states when there's 2,000 of the finest singles already here on Long Island looking for a committed relationship.
Mm-hmm. And I always yeah. say Maureen is a vetter out. So she will vet out people yes. and save you a ton of time yes. from these mindless texting situations <laughs> that get you nowhere. Yes. They don't even get you a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> I just love disqualifying people. It's... Um, I make it very theatrical. I, I w- want to hear that one day. I want to hear you disqualify okay. someone. Well, come on You're over out. because we get about 10 people <laughs> calling in a day. So you'll hear me doing it all the time. Or if someone, one of my girls, if they make the appointments for me, maybe they didn't pick up on the fact that the guy is, say, a narcissist or a control freak. Right. I can spot that in 5 to 15 minutes. And that's when I'm really theatrical on calling him out on it that he would never, ever be able to get into my program. And I slammed on my <laughs> laptop or if I'm in my Melville office because we're going back to it. Uh-huh. We are inching our way back to it. I've actually been there many times doing appointments, but soon we will be back there full time. And then if someone is a narcissist at that point, I say, OK, up, up, follow me. You're out. I walk them down what we call the The hall of shame. (laughs) The walk of shame. And to a narcissist, they can't even believe it. So in their mind, they'll try to turn it around as, okay, so yeah, um, you just want me to call you back next week or something. Mm Mm-hmm. No, No. (laughs) you're disqualified. You're a narcissist. Best of luck. Bye. (laughs) Period. And and I do this in front of everyone who, because there's always a lot of people in the lobby. Hmm. So everybody knows if you're a narcissist, stay on the Internet because I could spot you. Sadly, narcissists don't really know they're narcissists because they only think about themselves. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) And it's kind of a problem. What a red flag about a narcissist is, and I learned this not as a matchmaker for 20 years. I learned it, as you know, prior <laughs> being a former pharmaceutical rep. Oh. The first thing a narcissist will do is to tell their partner, you know, you're a narcissist. Mm-hmm. And say a man is saying that to the woman, the woman believes it. Well, it's gaslighting. She, they gaslight yes. you. Constantly. And she's thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. And it's just, it's a horrible thing. So if someone is telling you that go to therapy instantly Mm -hmm. let the therapist get to know you and i could pretty much guarantee that the therapist will say no no you are not a narcissist why don't you bring in your boyfriend and then Mm -hmm. when that happens the girl says to the boyfriend my therapist wants you to come in on the next visit oh yeah no 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 i'm not into it's your problem not mine right yeah i actually want to write a book about this because i've had so much experience with it and it's the hardest thing to deal with it is when you're in a relationship with a narcissist and it's very common and another thing is lauren is very kind and loving thank you so what happens is thank you (laughs) so we are magnets Mm -hmm. to narcissists because opposites attract but they're the worst things for us right but we want to take care of people and help them yes and rescue them but you learn over the years you can't rescue anyone and they can spot us from across the room say at a wedding they see a mile someone (laughs) something happens to someone we're right in there to help that person that narcissist sees that gravitates to us like a magnet i know i need that girl because she's going to be easy to manipulate that's what they do. And then they mm-hmm. put us up on a pedestal. We're feeling, oh, my God, it's the greatest feeling in the whole wide right. world. And then, it happens so quickly. I'm so lucky. <laughs> this guy is great. He's gorgeous, which they do tend to be very charismatic handsome. and very handsome. Mm-hmm. So you're up on this pedestal. Once the narcissist feels that you love him, that's when he starts knocking you off that pedestal. Mm-hmm. And you're left to wonder, wait, what did, what did I, I do, I do wrong? wrong? Did I gain weight? That's a typical mm-hmm. thing. Because that's what he's telling the person. Mm-hmm. You know, you gained weight. Right. It's horrible. So if that is happening to you, just know you're with a narcissist and it's time to move on. And again, this is one of the reasons why I think matchmaking is such a positive thing because you do vet that out right away. And yes. on the Internet, people can tell you all sorts of things. They can tell you how they want to meet you. They want to give you everything in the world. But... Maureen actually gets to the nitty gritty right away and says, no, that's not true. I know the questions to ask. It's a minefield. I I won't go into it today, but something just happened this week of an ultimate narcissist. Really? Can you give us a little? 
Yeah. Uh, okay. So a couple of years ago, a guy came in and I wasn't quite sure, you mm-hmm. know, so I was a little iffy. So I just had my antennas up and he went out with a girl and all of a sudden he started complaining because he likes to work out all the time. They were living together and she started, he was saying what a great cook she is. So she starts making pancakes mm-hmm. from every morning. Oh. And so on Saturdays, he called me up complaining, yeah, she's um, making pancakes when I want to go out to the gym. She's tacked on 30 pounds this past month eating pancakes in the morning mm-hmm. while I'm working out. So right there, he lost his membership because thankfully they <laughs> moved in together. Done. Right. You know, if you meet someone and you go on hold, whether it's with me or on your own, well, you can't be dating done. when you're living with exactly. someone. Exactly. <laughs> so he lost his membership. Then we found out things from her, mm-hmm. narcissistic tendencies. So I protected her, of course. He was done. We kept her in the system because mm-hmm. she's lovely. And every year he's been trying to get back in. And, you know, with him, I'm not as forthcoming, mm-hmm. okay, for particular reasons, which I won't mention, but I will not let him in. Okay, so he tries every year. He just tried a couple of days ago, and he was saying, oh, yeah, I spoke to her a year ago, and um, I really realized that we were meant to be. And you know, Wait, he, he wants to get back with the pancake yeah, girl? Yes, and he said, <laughs> you were wrong, Maureen. You, you said that I did some things to her. No, no, you were wrong. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to her last week, and she told me you, I didn't do anything, but I lost her number. Can I have her phone number? No. Well, how do you speak to her, but you lost her number? Uh, of course. Is he a pathological liar, uh, yeah, too? Well, could be. So then here's the <laughs> ultimate thing that a narcissist will do. Mm-hmm. So when he saw that I would not budge, mm-hmm. he's not getting the phone number, he's not getting into my program, and I made up a silly excuse as to why I couldn't take him on. Then he says, well, do you remember when I was a client, you have to have felt it that you and I had chemistry together. Oh, boy. So he really... So that's what a narcissist will do. <laughs> yeah. Any they, way to get in the door. Any way to get in the door. And so me, he he was thinking I would be thrilled. Oh, oh, really? You had chemistry with me? Instead, I said, yeah, no, no. Because a lot of nope. people will fall for it because uh, they're they do. so good at what they do. Yes. So I have been trained with that. I said, no, nope. nope. Didn't have chemistry, and in <laughs> fact, we're not even compatible. So let's just not even go so there. So let's move on. Yes, exactly. But, <laughs> but it was interesting. The audacity of someone. That is a typical thing a narcissist would do. And I'm sad to say that a lot of women probably would fall for that. Really? We had chemistry then? Well, because we want to think the best. We want to believe that people are as well-intentioned as they say they are. But unfortunately, we've learned nine out of ten times, they don't say what they mean, they don't mean what they say, and they're in it for their own personal gain. And it's very disappointing, actually. It is. But we we move on. Okay, let's talk about the holidays, which is such a Yes, they're going to be here before we know (laughs) it. Because we, we know everybody who's single loves the holidays. Holidays, right? Yes. Oh boy. But the biggest mistake people make is they call me up December first. Hi, um, I'd like to join mm-hmm. because I want to meet someone for the holidays. I'm no. like, what? What? <laughs> it's December first. Now is the time, yes. singles. Okay, now get is the time. On board. Put that exactly. cute Halloween costume on. Call Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention Halloween because, you know, that is a phobia of mine. I'm frightened to death. I did not know that. Yes. But what about the cute costumes? Um, Well, I am Cupid (laughs) if I have to go out to a party, which I very, very rarely do. It's only if I have to go. I'm just Cupid. And that's it. I'm a witch every year, but this year I bought a long black seductive wig. Ooh, cool. (laughs) But still, it frightens me to death. So, really? Yeah, it does. Okay, so what do we say to people? Get on board now. Try to look for love before that November sneaks up on you, that Thanksgiving. Because yes. you're going to gain 
pounds during Thanksgiving anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to wait after the new year and you want to have somebody to spend New Year's with, right? And, you know, this is the best time for everyone after the pandemic to try to find someone if especially you want to lose a few pounds. Because with the pandemic, I call it that every one of my clients, no matter how beautiful, handsome, and in shape they are, we all gain the pandemic 15, Mm -hmm. is what I call it. So if you're starting my program and you're thinking in the back of your head, should I wait until I lose these 15 pounds? Nope, nope. Everyone else has them too. It's the pandemic 15. Right. That's and you what know I call what? it. I found that people aren't as critical as you are of yourself. So yes. if you're feeling a little bit overweight, you go out on a few dates, you feel good, you might eat less. Yes, and it gives <laughs> you motivation. It does. It gives you, you a lot of motivation to just, exercise and feel I, good about yourself. I think I've said this on a Friday Facebook Live as I'm eating ice birthday cake <laughs> ice cream one day with the sprinkles. And I said, if you're starting to date and you really like that person, when you have that urge to eat that birthday cake ice cream with sprinkles, as I was doing, right. if you have that person, you're going to think, you know what? Okay, birthday cake ice cream, date on a Friday night with this really hot guy. I was thinking you're something gonna, else, but you're you know going to put that about. ice cream back in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, you're going to put that so ice cream away. It so you does don't have that little belly fat. It does <laughs> give you more motivation to get back into shape. For sure. What is uh, your opinion on bringing a significant other to Thanksgiving or Christmas? If you've only been dating for three months or less than three months, is that too soon? That's a good question. That's a great question because I usually say the three month rule is if, and again, I have, I'm saying this based upon my own clients because we already know they're compatible and we just have to see if they have enough chemistry. So if that's the case in three months, absolutely, it is time now to introduce your family. Now, say you meet someone on your own, it typically takes six months for the average person to find out if you're compatible because people tell you what they wanna hear, as we were saying before, and people can only be something they're not for only so long, Mm -hmm. and that timeline is usually six Six months. months. So if you're... If it's within three months, you have to be careful. Yeah, I say, unless you've known them from a previous life, I wouldn't introduce (laughs) them to your family. (laughs) Or, you know, just for fun, if you want to. Meet him after the Thanksgiving dinner, right? (laughs) Yes, or bring him to the Thanksgiving dinner. And if your mother says, nope, nope, don't like him, always trust your mother. My mother used to say that to me all the time. Always trust your mother, and uh-huh. I would think, oh, God. But your yes. mother is usually N- right. Mothers are always right. So, of course, I've said that to my boys who are 24 and 26 to this day. But it's true. Yeah, it really is. Yep. But I think that like a lot of people want to rush, rush it and say, yeah, they I'm do. so in love with this person. Yes. And, we're, and they fantasize, like, we're going to have yes. a Christmas together. Yes, and he's going to give yes. me a beautiful present. He might, engage, he <laughs> might ask me to get engaged. <laughs> After but three in- months. Interestingly enough... Right before the holidays is when typically most couples break up. Mm-hmm. And it's because the expectations that they have do not happen. Their expectations are too high. Yes. And I know that I had an experience where I thought I was going to get engaged. Yep. And my boyfriend at the time, who ended up being my husband, put a ring down on the plate. Uh-huh. And it was during the holidays. And uh-huh. I thought, for sure, it was an engagement ring. Of course. Because we'd been right. together for a long time. Of course. Please and I, say it was. No, I opened up the box, and it was um, like a sapphire ring. I mean, it was a beautiful ring. I'm not poo-pooing it. I would throw it in but his I face. I was so <laughs> upset. It ruined the entire dinner. I walked out on dinner. Yes, I would, I too. mean, it was well-intentioned, but like he right. could have put a necklace there. Right. Or, or we've seen on so many TV shows that a guy will put the ring box and the girl will be so excited and she opens it up and this is the worst smack in the face that you can ever get. She opens it up and it's a key to the apartment. Oh. Would you like to move in with me? Okay, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Throw that back in his face. Ladies, never move in with someone before you get the ring. 
Okay. We'll always remember that. I don't think a lot of people follow that rule well, of thumb. That's I, why the divorce rate <laughs> is so high. That's why people break up all the time. So just remember, you have the ring, and then if you decide you want to move in together, fine. I think that's fine. I, I know what my mother would always say, and I bet your mother said it too. <laughs> don't <laughs> buy, buy the, the cow. cow unless right. <laughs> when the milk's free. Right, <laughs> right. So, I would love to say that that is still in place with, you know, being young. My mother was putting that in my head every single day of my life. Yeah, why buy the cow? So I guess that's my generation. Yeah, but, but I think kids probably today. Oh, it's different. Totally different, different. Because women are mar- more on an equal footing, too. Yes, yes. You know, they have more power because they're yes. m- they're making the money. They're more yes. independent. And now people just say, I'm not going to buy a car without trying out the car first. <laughs> right. And, you know, let's face it, we probably all have had experiences of someone that we really liked. And then when we got to that level... We thought, no, nope. <laughs> no go, <laughs> no, nope, need someone else. Time to break up. Sadly, sadly. You know. But, okay, but so. again, you need to be compatible and you need to have chemistry. So it's OK if that happens. You just keep looking then. Here's something that Joe, the producer, brought up that was interesting because we talked about Christmas shopping and expectations. Mm-hmm. And there's a buzz that, you know, Things are not going to be available, so you got to start shopping now. And if you have mm-hmm. a lover or a date that you want to impress, um, you might be running out of options if you wait too long, right, Maureen? <laughs> and yes. what does that do to the whole? <laughs> well, it happens every single year. Mm-hmm. Every year, there's a popular thing. Everyone wants to get it for the person that they love, and I don't know how they do it marketing-wise. They, I guess, distribute or make only half of the amount Mm -hmm. that they're marketing. Like Tickle Me Elmo. (laughs) Yes, yes. They make only half of the amount that they think will sell on purpose, and it works every single year. Mm -hmm. So now really is not only the best time to look for a relationship, but to also start shopping if you are in a relationship now. Mm -hmm. And what do you tell people who do get depressed and down on the holidays? Because it is hard to go into the holiday season thinking, I'm single, I'm going to be alone again, I'm not going to have that New Year's Eve kiss. Yes. We go through this every year, and it, it is very sad, but I could tell you, my team at MTN Matchmaking, everyone loves what we do, everyone is positive, happy, mm-hmm. they will make you happy, we do everything to, even if you're not dating someone, you could have exciting dating coaching, so we do everything possible to have you not feel lonely and mm-hmm. for you to know that you are loved, you are a great catch, and it's just a matter of time before you find the right person. Right. Anyway, we're going to go through uh, one more time how we get to Maureen. Just give us a call, one 888 match Okay, again, Maureen Tara Nelson. I'm Lauren DeFranco, and this is The Matchmaking Show. We'll see you next week. Bye.